Well, then the question is, are you depressed or are you just at the bottom of a dominance hierarchy? One of the things that happens if you're higher in serotonin because you're more dominant is that you're more satiated all the time. That's why people who are low in the dominance hierarchy with decreased levels of serotonin are more impulsive and also more emotionally dysregulated. They're more impulsive because, hey, you take your positive thing when you can get it. And so they're, they're more dissatisfied, they're more looking for anything that will produce a positive outcome. And then, they're also more likely to experience diffuse negative emotion. Partly because their serotonin systems are lower, indicating their tenuous status in the dominance hierarchy. Meaning that everything they do that's uncertain is far more dangerous. I studied the serotonin system for a very, very long time, and I know perfectly well that one of the things that it does is monitor your position in a social hierarchy. And, 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 and it's more important than that because the serotonin system is a, it's a master control neurochemical system. It's like the conductor of an orchestra. Everything in your brain depends on the serotonin system, which is why you think about it like an antidepressant um, decreases the rate at which neurons will reuptake serotonin. You, you need serotonin to modulate the way your neurons work. You take an antidepressant and the serotonin works a little longer. Okay, so what's the consequence of that? Well, let's say you're depressed. Okay, we've got to think about being depressed for a minute. So when, when you're depressed, this is what happens. All you remember about the past is what's negative. So everything about the past is negative. All you can see in the present is what's negative. Everything about the present is negative. And nothing about the future is positive at all. And so, so that's interesting, eh? Because it means that something has shifted inside you, let's say neurophysiologically, that changes the way you view everything. Everything. Your entire past, the present, and the entire future. And what it essentially does is exaggerate negative emotion to a tremendous degree, that's depression, and suppress positive emotion. Now, there can be variance in that. So, sometimes you see depressed people and they come you can think about your own mood in this way, you know, you, you might say, well, I'm not that sad, but I've just sort of lost my interest in everything. Okay, so that means that what's happened is your positive emotion system has been suppressed. Because the positive emotion system is what gives you that interest in things, that pulls you forward to action. Okay, and the negative emotion system, that's anxiety, that's a huge part of it. Frustration, disappointment, grief, pain, that kind of covers it. Anger as well. Though anger is a bit complicated because it's half a positive emotion and half a negative emotion, which is why it feels so good to get angry, by the way, um, and why it also impels you to action, whereas most negative emotions stop you. you know? So, so in, in any case, um, if your if your serotonin system, if your serotonin function declines, then all of a sudden everything is negative. You think, well, isn't that interesting? How the hell can it be that something can change within you? that changes everything? And the answer has to be, well, it must be a fundamental system that's been changed, right? Because it, it, if it changes everything, it has to be a system on which all other systems depend. And that is the case with the serotonin system. And that's really worth knowing, especially when you also know that the serotonin system counts where you are in the social hierarchy. And so there's this weird kind of one-to-one -one correspondence. Imagine a social hierarchy has 10 levels. I don't care what hierarchy you're in. Most people's hierarchies are actually quite small. They sort of consist of the people that they compare themselves to, you know, which is a strange thing too, because one of the things that you see happening with really successful people is they actually don't get a lot more, a lot happier and a lot less unhappy as they climb the, the, the broad social ladder because the people they compare themselves to change. It's important to understand, it's a, the, the, the message here, the point of this is that you have a system, the serotonin system, base of your neurophysiology. It also sets your brain up during embryonic development. So it's, it, really is, it really is the master control system in many, many ways. And it counts where you are in your hierarchy. And then it decides how much positive emotion and how much negative emotion you should feel on average because of your position. And so like if you're 
let's say number one is at the top and number 10 is at the bottom. So you're number 10, you're barely clinging to the bottom of reality. Your brain says, look, it's dangerous where you are at the bottom of the hierarchy. You don't have a lot of friends. It's, uh, it's precarious down there. And so that means any little thing that goes wrong, any little error you make, that might be the end of you. And so you better be on guard and alert. And if something small happens, it, it better hurt because it might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. And there's nothing pleasant about that. Like, of course, why would there be? Why would there be anything pleasant about a, a, a process that magnifies everything negative you feel about anything that might be wrong? And, and not, just on, not just on one small dimension of negative emotion, not just anxiety, which is bad enough, but anxiety and the pain-related emotions. So, Pain-related emotions are pain, obviously. It generally indicates damage to a psychophysiological system. But grief is a pain-like emotion, and frustration is a pain-like emotion, and so is disappointment. Loneliness as well. Those are all pain-like emotions and, and have, have elaborated out of an underlying pain system. And the, so the negative emotion system is like a tree that has branches, and each of the branches is the separate negative emotion, you know, but they're all tied together at the root. And positive emotions are like that as well, except they're not quite as differentiated. And so if your serotonin levels fall because you've suffered a hierarchical defeat, then the positive emotion system gets flattened so that good things no longer feel good because it's dangerous to take risks, perhaps if you're at the bottom of the hierarchy and you're not doing very well, which is why you're at the bottom. Why should you have any trust in yourself and you don't have any friends and you're not well situated in, in, in the social world? You're not going to be enthusiastically moving forward to do new things. And so your motivation for, 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 for engaging in life declines and it can decline pretty much to zero. You know, if you, if you see people who are seriously depressed, they say, oh, well, I can't even listen to music anymore. It just sounds flat and dead. You know, and you know, if, if you talk to someone who says that about music, they're, they're pretty damn depressed because music is one of those things that virtually everybody always enjoys, you know, at least one genre or another.